the review, I'm not going to get my thoughts because I'll probably rant and then not rant and then I'll get mad that I didn't rant. I'm going to start with Guido. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people like him. I don't understand why because he has acted like a heel. I know a lot of people say he isn't. He did. He has. He still is. But the thing about this story right now is that Joseph Park, and I agree with Food Killer 99 and I agree with the Select Daddy. I'm just going by the way they've set up the story and they've broken it and redid it, broken and redid it with Joseph Park. Joseph Park is supposedly a lawyer without a firm because we know he has no real law office. And then he saves Guido saying that his law office is now sponsoring him, which in actuality a law office cannot sponsor you. In real life, of course. And this is where things are going to become very murky and annoying. Because you see this segment that Guido did saying that I'm going to different press conferences. I'm going to different promotions. I'm making that dollar. Why is he going dollar dollar bill, y'all? Why? He's not a thug. And I'm not saying because he's white and he's Irish. Look, I grew up in New York. I've been around Irish whites. And there's some Irish whites act more thuggish and black than most black people I knew. And I'm part black, so I can say that. Not because I'm being racist, just I'm saying it. But he just doesn't have that type of personality to try and pull that off. And it just looks forced and looks stupid. But here's the thing. I'm saying this truthfully. The story of Joseph Park having an imaginary firm as the story for Guido now realizing he has to still be deported is a garbage story. It would have been better, and this is what I said last week, that this instead of leads to Joseph Park finally admitting he has no law firm, it should be, he should admit that the paperwork that Guido signed was not for his law firm, it was a marriage license because it was the only way he could stay in the country. That is the only way this is going to make sense and be fun. This is what people are not seeing. People want to make some stories make sense. In wrestling, a lot of times stories don't always make sense and it's great. Other times stories make sense and it's great. Sometimes you want a little bit of both and that's great. In this case, you need something that makes sense. You need Joseph Park to marry Guido because it'll make better sense than Joseph Park doing an imaginary thing. I'm being honest here. Now, the women's match of Eva Story and Taya. Valkyrie. I finally got a name right. I hope I got a name right. Look, the match itself doesn't matter. That big mod and mess afterward is the key of this and it just upsets me. You want to know why? Why is Taya going after Rosemary who cut a beautiful promo? I missed her. And if this was pre-recorded before supposing she hurt her shoulder, it was well done. But here's the thing. Why is she going after Rosemary? Shouldn't she go after Sienna, who came out after Rosemary started getting beat up by, by Taya, and then they had the little in-between, and then Gail Kim came out, then Terrence Sorrell came out, then Allie came out. The, uh, then the, the everybody, in the, except for the new women in the back. This is what's make, two things make me angry about the situation with the knockouts. One, the story with Taya. Makes no sense. She should have gone after Sienna. It shouldn't matter about Rosemary. Rosemary has no title shot. She already had hers. So she's got to fight to get it back. It should have been Taya going after Sienna. But then the second thing that angers me. Where are the other women? There's supposedly now 10 women in the knockouts division. And we've only at least 10. There's, if I'm right, there's about 15 women. Counting the women you saw in the ring, ladies and gentlemen. 15 women, unless I'm wrong, it's roughly about 15 to 10 women now. And we haven't seen any of the new women. None! I wish that, I'm saying it right now, knockouts for explosion. Tell someone in GFW, look, do double tapings. One set of tapings for your impact. The other set of tapings... Do it for Explosion. Put it on YouTube so the people can see it. Sponsor it with your wonderful commentary team who's now working together, which I'm glad. I don't want to see them fight anymore. They had their moment. 
Put it there. Say, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see more action from the Knockouts or the X Division, go to Explosion on YouTube. We are now putting our Explosion show, which is an hour long on YouTube. Watch it. Live it. Love it. Look, I sponsored it better than them. And I'm just a little YouTuber. That's the way it should be. If you don't have time on the regular show or on the network, put it on freaking YouTube. For free. Do all the stuff. You're building your stories there. Sponsor it once every couple of weeks. Let people know. If you want to know how this thing's been going down, go to Explosion on YouTube. People will love it because then they can understand what the hell's going on. Ah! <sighs> Y'all know I, how I feel about that. Exercise my demon. And I'm not Christian, but I'll say it like that anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Petey Williams had a video segment. So did Moose. Now with Petey Williams knowing that he's going after the X Division, it does mean something. But with the X Division so weak right now, X Division for Explosion, you wonder how are they going to sponsor Petey Williams when they have not barely sponsored at all Sanjay Duff. And I know a lot of people who say, Sanjay Duff may not have a huge amount of charisma, but there's always ways to compensate for his charisma. Do more action. Have someone else talk for him. Let him show himself in the ring, which he's a good wrestler. You just have to package him properly. And it's angering me. That's why I'm botching so much that they wouldn't do that with him. And now you look at Petey Williams, who originally started in the business around that time, who is well known because of the Canadian Destroyer in Impact. And you wonder if they're going to sponsor him properly or they're going to make him nothing. Like Sanjay Duff. And maybe do something a little bit with the Trevor Lee. But then you know they're not. That, it, that's angering. But at least it's good to see they are going to do something for either Victory Row or Bound for Glory. That's at least something. Um, Congo Kong. Versus Shira. Very random. <sighs> Don't care. But they ain't doing anything with Congo Kong. They're not doing anything with Muhammad Ali Shira, who should have been pushed a while ago. He should have at least had the global championship before it turned over to the grand championship and tried it to see if the people would go for him. But no, they wouldn't do it, especially in India. Where that would have gave them such incredible push. And I'm talking about GFW. You want to get more people to care about your product. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, India is still watching the product. Just because they're not there anymore doesn't mean, I believe, it's Sony 6. Isn't at least showing some of it or all of it. And now they're not even seeing their favorite wrestlers in Impossible Sanjay Duff or Muhammad Shira. They don't show them on TV anymore. To a certain extent, you know, with Mohammed Shia, they haven't seen him in weeks. And Sanjay Dub a little bit, but still, I'm just saying. Now, the Global Forge. Now, I didn't really say anything last week about it because I had to think about it. And then I didn't want to do it for the simple reason that it's a bite off a British boot camp and it's number three. That's what this is, a British boot camp three, but I believe it's in the United States instead of abroad. Now, it's nice to see younger talent. It's nice to see they're being sponsored. But what does this actually mean? You already got a whole bunch of people on the roster. You're not even showing. x Division for Explosion. Someone go to the Impact Twitter. I don't have Twitter. You can go to Impact. Go to Twitter. Say x Division for Explosion. Knockout for Explosion. Somebody. Listen. Make it free, sponsor it, the people will like it. But anyway, you wonder about these three people. Three supposedly going to make it through at least 30 guys. And including it's a bite off like of the May Classic and the Cruiserweight Classic. You know it's, it's like that. But the problem is you're going to three guys. So, it's going to be the same thing as before. They're barely going to be seen. you got so many people on the roster now, you're not even seeing them. Huh. <sighs> Just, that's how it feels. Now, LAX. 
OVE at a club. Finally seeing the guys from LAX. I forgot what was the guy's name. I forgot the guy's names that are in LAX next to Homicide. You know why? Because they never talk. This, I believe, is the first time that you see these guys really talk without without Conan there. Yeah, they still have to talk with Homicide there, but at least they're talking briefly, which was actually very interesting. When it came to OVE, they wanted a better shot, so they went to their own house, messed with them, and now they're supposed to be giving them a shot? I don't buy it. I know they'll probably do it, but then it really doesn't make any sense. Why didn't they beat their asses down? They're in their freaking club. They should have beat their asses down. Threw them out. And then a couple of more times they try. And then they give them their shot. Because that was too easy. It was. It didn't feel like it was important. Really didn't, ladies and gentlemen. It did not feel important. So we may get it next week on Victory Row. Maybe. Unless it's going to be in one of the other promotions. So, uh. Now, that reminds me. EC3 and Eddie Edwards versus Pacta Pato Patoma and Phantasma. I, I'm pronouncing the guy's name wrong. I'm sorry. I'm just bad with names with people I don't normally see. And particularly, they're supposed to be from another company, which supposedly they're supposed to be another company when they're not. And the thing that gets me, and this is the thing that gets me, when it came to Eddie Edwards, supposedly he just won one of their titles in Wrestling Noah. Where the hell is his title? If Global Force Wrestling is letting the wrestlers go to other promotion and win titles, why the blue fuck isn't he carrying it? Why? Why? He's supposed to carry the title. No matter where he goes. And he comes from the back with no freaking title around his waist. But EC3 comes out with the Global Force Wrestling Grand Championship. That just makes it stupid. Look. The match itself doesn't really matter. It doesn't. The new guy that came in. I'll talk about him in a minute. But let's be honest here. You see that they're trying to do something with AAA. They're trying to do something with Crash, which I now know is Conan's promotion. And they're trying to do something with Wrestling Noah. And they're doing it so horribly. The work is disgusting. They don't know how to promote the other promotions. They don't know how to show the other promotions. They just make it look stupid. And then they make the product look stupid. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to wait until halfway to the end of this, of this review. Because I want to freaking rant. Ugh. <sighs> I'm sorry. But it's the truth. Now, what do we got here? Let's get to the two matches of John M. I'm not using Johnny Impact. I'm using John Morrison. I don't like Impact. It sucks. It just sounds so corny and hokey. I'm sorry. That's just me. First, he defends his title against Cam, which... I'm not going to lie, he did get some heat. I'm glad he did. I still don't like his character. It sucks. I don't care if anyone says try to get into it. No, it sucks. I don't like him as Biff from Back to the Future. Am I a liar? And making the most ridiculous hokey. So, you can wish in one hand and take a dump in another. Which one's going to come first? What? What type of, what type of saying is that? It's a really... What? What? I hate his character. I don't hate the guy. And it's obvious he has talent to get that heat. That means he did, even though that part sucked, the rest of it did work. He did sound well enough that the crowd did hate him and give him heat, which I'm not against. The character sucks. But he still can do something with it. And then he loses against John Morrison. Not too long. Then, you got the new guy. What was the guy's name? Uh, Tassilo. I believe I'm pronouncing the guy's name wrong. I'm just saying it the best I can. I'm bad with names, no matter if they're Spanish or English, ladies and gentlemen. But in the end, John Morrison says, I'm looking for Eli Drake. Where the hell is Eli Drake? I know he's here because his car was in the front. 
And they keep telling him he's not there. And then the very guys who was in the match with EC3 and Eddie Edwards, they said he's not there. So he confronts the new guy that helped them, that had that big rope, and said, I want to fight. I want to fight you, and I'm willing to give my number one contender spot to you, if you win. Why? Why? Why would you... It was bad enough for him to do that in the beginning of the show. But then you did it again near the end of the show. That was freaking stupid. I don't understand why he did it. It was a good match. But in the end, still... Ugh. And oh, I'm moving on to that, but almost forgot. Congo Kong, when he faced Muhammad Ali Shear, won this match. He came down to the ring, and then he saw Tank Top Girl and went to her like that. And she was smiling her ass off. She had fun. I wish I could have got a shot of that. Unfortunately, I could not. But still, but watch out. That's still a gorgeous woman. Do not mess with Tank Top Girl, even though she liked it. Do not, do, don't, don't. Congo Kong. I don't care if I'm here, he's here, and he'll kick my ass in 10 seconds. I'll still say, don't mess with Tank Top Girl. Don't! I'll still stand up after you kick my ass. Screaming in pain, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> anyway. Final thing. Mm, is there anything else? Just to be sure. I don't want to forget anything. Uh, That's it. Finally. You have Eli Drake. Oh, I keep forgetting my shoulder's still messed up. Eli Drake versus, what is this guy's name? I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Grandandi or something. A guy that's probably in his early 20s. The youngest one on the AAA roster. Was it good to see a full match from AAA? Yes, it was. Even though it should be on Impact, this is what... Impact Wrestling, GFW, should have been doing. Look, if they're going to try and do something just like the NWA used to, you got to show full matches. Make them special when you're connected to another promotion. And as I said early in this video, they have not done that. They've shown little snippets which were pretty well done. But because they're doing such bad work promoting the other promotions and worse promoting themselves, it makes it impossible to care. But this I did care because they did show a full match. They did commentary for that match, not a Spanish announced team, but actually the announced team that was for GFW, which was kind of stupid because they're saying that I can't stand the sounds when they know they're not there. They shouldn't, he shouldn't have did that. He said, we are there at Tijuana, Mexico, if that was where it was. And we're hearing this, oh, I can't stand the sounds. That would have been better than him saying, I can't stand the sounds. And the recording, that was just dumb. Was it a good match? Yes, it was. Because it was shown. Eli Drake acted the way he normally does. The crowd participation in that place was big. And in the end, Eli Drake won. And... His promo beforehand was beautiful. Did I care about this, this, this impact? No. You don't really need to see it. Except if you want to see the ending of the show with that part, yes. Yes, you can. The other matches were alright, but this was the most important thing to watch. But as it stands, do I care about Victory Row? No. The women's six-way tag. Do I care about six... Six way tag? No. For the women? I want to see what's going on with Taya going up against Sienna. Not Taya going to work with Sienna and, and Terrence Sorrell against the women. That makes no sense. Maybe we'll get something good from the X Division. And maybe we'll get some from Eli Drake when it comes to Johnny M. I don't know. And we still don't know what's going to happen with EC3. What is he going to do? Is he still going to face the guys that quote on AAA, quote, AAA, when they're us, GFW? I don't know. You guys tell me how you feel below. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.